human has been neutralized. Well, today I've got this. It's a brand new replacement DMG shell, Game Boy DMG shell. And I'm going to see today uh, how it is. I'm going to try to put one together and see if it's good quality, if it fits uh, like the original one, and see if there's any discernible differences between uh, the replacement and the original ones. I got this from Lee Chan off eBay. Okay, well I've got two original Game Boy shells, uh, original Game Boys, next to the replacement shell from Lee Chan. And uh, as you can see, it, it's pretty close, if, if not exactly the same. I'm sure there's some small differences, but um, we can see two um, kind of typical shape Game Boys here. You know, this one's got uh, dirt and, and scratches all over it. And this one's, I don't know if it shows up on camera, but this one's really uh, turned yellow. And I wanted to put them side by side so you can kind of see the colors. This one is, um, I'm guessing, close to the original color. And this one's a bit yellow, and you can compare that to the the replacement shell in the middle. Now there are some ways that you can restore the color of these uh, yellowed um, old video games. The main one is um, RetroBright, but RetroBright is, it has its problems. It's messy, and it takes some time, and it doesn't always turn out turn out quite right. So uh, thankfully, um, these just came onto the market um, pretty recently in the last uh, several months. But uh, this is the, just the color comparison, so you can see. Uh, the difference between them. For today I'm going to go ahead and replace the shell on this one. It's got the better screen out of the two between the yellowed one and this one. This one's got a slightly better screen and um, as you can see this one's missing uh, the back and it's got um, scratches all over it and um, pretty typical fare for for old Game Boys. So I'm gonna take the shell off this one and replace it with this new shell. The shell you get um, comes uh, just like this. This is how it was mailed to me. It was mailed in a um, in a bubble envelope, and as you can see, it comes with some parts inside. I don't know why this wasn't inside with it, but um, it's got uh, new silicon silicon uh, start select buttons, and it's got a little baggie. Uh, with the rest of the um, with the rest of the buttons, the D-pad and the uh, AB button and the power switch and the elusive port cover. Oh. And don't forget the silicon uh, AB button uh, pad. And on the back, um, we've got a uh, a brand new battery cover. All new battery springs except for the two that are soldered onto the motherboard of the Game Boy. So as you can see, this is the full kit. With the, the replacement shell, you get the front and back, um, a brand new battery back cover, uh, new silicon uh, button pads, uh, replacement buttons, the uh, port cover, D-pad, and the uh, power switch. And I guess of note is the power switch is black and not gray. So just to compare the old shell and the new shell, it's hard to do unless it's something really dramatically wrong with it. but. Um, what I have here is the um, the bottom of the old shell and the top of the new shell, and I've got them together. So if the parts are significantly different, um, they won't they won't match up. The new and old parts won't match up. If you check out the um, the uh, Game Boy Advance uh, new shells and you try to use some of the old uh, original parts with them, sometimes you'll notice that the tolerances are way different on the new parts. So this is the new top and the old bottom. As you can see, I've got them together there, and there's a. I'm pushing them together, but there's a fair amount of wiggle. Okay, so the not exact fit there. And to compare that, I'll get the the original top and the original bottom here, and there's just you know it's a lot it's a lot less wiggle there. So they are slightly different. Um, whether that's going to be a problem or not, I uh, can't tell yet. Uh, here's a side-by-side -side. on the graphics. Uh, you can decide how good the, the logos look. Um, to, I'm not very uh, artistic or design-oriented, so they look they look pretty similar to me. I'm having a hard time uh, catching out any differences. Maybe the maybe the font in Nintendo is a little bit uh, it's a little bit blurry. The screen printing or whatever they use to um, to do that, it 
it's quite, isn't quite as crisp as the original. And of course, when you're talking about 30-year-old uh, games they don't make parts for anymore, you kind of have to live with what, what they have out there. But, but it's not too bad. I, I generally like it. The plastic is, it feels pretty similar. Uh, the texture is just about the same. Let's take a look at the inside. See if we can notice any differences. The posts appear to be all uh, in about the same places. I don't see any any major differences. Um, even these uh, little support uh, notches, I'm not sure what those are called, but these little bits of plastic, they're, they're in the same places here. So. I'm not sure what technology they use to um, to replicate this, but it seems like they've done a fairly fairly good job. I want, um, this one has a raised um, a number 4 and T, and this this one doesn't. Also 4 and T there. This one doesn't. You can see the uh, the headphones uh, marking there. This is the original one on top, and there's the replacement one, and they look look very good speaker grill looks good select and start and B and A look pretty good so there's the front all in all I can't tell too much of a difference although there's some there must be some very subtle ones since the uh, original parts don't quite match up as well as the as the replacement ones all right we can go ahead and take a look at the at the back shell and side by side. I'm, they're so close I'm having a hard time telling which one's which. So this is the original one and this is the replacement. The color is is not quite the same. This one looks a little bit more brown than this one although I, who knows what color this is really supposed to be because I haven't seen a new one in a long time so I don't remember but um, they're all a little bit different colored. Um, so I don't know if this is turned ashen white or this one's just a little too dark, but they are uh, slightly different. I can't get them both in the shot, but this is the um, the back logo information on the new shell. There we are. All right, and then this is the the same on the old part. And without seeing them side by side, I'm not going to be able to to tell much difference. So that looks pretty reasonable. And the the springs, um, the battery springs on this new shell, they look pretty good. They look better than some of the, the replacement ones you can buy. Uh, they look a slightly better quality. They're no doubt not as good as the original ones because um, I think good battery contacts are actually kind of hard to make. So compare those. They're a slightly different shape. This is the original one. And this is the replacement one. They've got a slightly different shape to them. So like I said, I doubt they're I doubt they're as good, but hopefully they're they're closer than the replacements that you can buy. The thing seems to line up pretty good. Take a look at the sides. Well I can't get it to focus too well on the side for some reason, but just eyeballing it here. Um, there's a very slight difference. Um, there's an arrow that points uh, beside the word DC, and on the on the older shell, the uh, triangle on the arrow is is a is a bit fatter and it comes closer to this edge right here. So there's some little slight differences, but the um, the lettering is all correct and they didn't they didn't make any typos or get the polarity wrong or anything like that. On the inside um, of the battery compartment the original shell says uh, SUM-3AA-R6 which I guess is the three ways to say right there. Three ways to say AA battery and on the on the replacement shell there's just there's a, the battery symbols are there but there's no writing. And um, in this little uh, detent they put for the, the serial number sticker on the on the original one, it's 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 a lot more shallow. On the on the replacement, it's it's a bit deeper looking. Although the they got the details right down to the the dot there. So I guess um, as far as replacement shells go, they did a really good job. 
you know, there's going to be little minor differences, and um, without the original molds, you know, it's really difficult to get it exactly right. But uh, the overall feel of the plastic, it feels nice. Um, feels about about the same weight. Maybe I'll get my scale out and actually see. They've also replaced, as, as you can see, the um, this metal shield. They've gone ahead and, and uh, put it in for you. They could have left that out, so that's a pretty good detail. I do see one. I don't know if it's a problem or not. This uh, metal tab isn't quite... That metal tab isn't quite lining up with the hole. Yeah, it'll probably bend straight, so maybe not a big deal. Alright, side by side. As you can see pretty obviously there, this, um, this mold mark isn't present here. I see the machining marks from the mold on this one very... Uh, Pretty easy to see there. Doesn't look too great. And this one, they're actually there. You can see them too. It's just um, they're a little more subtle. No big deal, really, as long as the thing fits. Let's go ahead so, and take a look at the replacement buttons they've given us. We've got the AB button silicones, the power switch, the um, expansion port cover, the AB buttons themselves, the silicones for start and select, and the D pad. Um, just eyeballing them from here. Um, obviously the biggest difference is they gave us the wrong color um, power switch and of course um, most of the old Game Boys you find don't have the, uh, the cover anymore so I don't actually even have one to compare it to. Um, the D-pad um, it looks pretty good and the A and B button uh, they look alright. Let's take a look at the back the battery cover. As you can see they are again slightly different colors and I find a lot of the replacement Game Boy parts end up being a little bit more brown than they should be. I don't know why they can't quite get that. I've got my trusty tri-wing screwdriver here. I'm going to go ahead and take this one apart. Some of the earlier models do have Phillips screws, so you might need a Phillips screwdriver to do this if you've got an earlier model Game Boy. This one takes a tri-wing, so I'm going to go ahead and get started and take this one apart. Okay, so I guess I should put it back together. I'm going to go ahead and try to use the original power button to keep the color right. So hopefully it'll work in this, uh, in this new shell. That'll do it. So everything goes back um, just about the way it came. They do not provide uh, new screws for you, so you have to reuse the old ones. Okay, so it felt it felt like that uh, these screws weren't weren't tapping very well, or that they were spinning, but. Um, I just pressed down a little bit harder, and obviously this plastic's brand new, so it's never had screws in it before. Hopefully the tolerances are good enough that the you can tighten everything down, you know, fairly good, and it won't it won't strip. I don't know; it doesn't feel quite right, though. Usually by now it should definitely be tight, but it's not. It's it's loosey goosey in there, and uh, I'm pressing down about as hard as I can, I'm trying to get that to. Uh, to catch and it just is it's really just spinning I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or or what but yeah that is that is not catching at all and it's totally a loosey goosey I don't like that maybe I found the uh, the fatal flaw in these replacement shells okay well that's that's not great, but um, maybe when uh, we put the shell on, if all the other screws aren't like that, um, it'll go ahead and clamp that uh, in place well enough. These are these are catching good. Those are nice and tight, and uh, I would say probably if this plastic is soft or out of spec. Don't you know? Don't over tighten, but but these really these ones down here. They just were not. Yeah, that's just spinning and spinning. That one right there. So, alright. Got the back done. 
so let's go ahead and do the front. These are maybe slightly different colors, but not no big deal. Okay, I had to stop because I thought maybe I was uh, having a senior moment, but the um, the D-pad silicone, I had to go back and take a look at the uh, the pictures I took earlier. They actually didn't give us a new one, so this is the old one. I was trying to find the new one, and I couldn't find it, and I was wondering why. Well, I took a look at the picture, what came out of the bag, and there wasn't one in there. So I'm just going to clean this one up with some alcohol and a uh, Kim White. Get all the dirt off of it. And uh, on those back um, carbon pads, I'm just gonna use my I'm just gonna use my Q-tip and some alcohol and get those cleaned off. You don't you don't want to clean these until this stops turning black. It'll just keep turning black because of the stuff it's made of. So don't worry if it if it looks dirty, it's not necessarily the dirt, just the color of the of that rubber coming off. All right, now that I've got the, um, the buttons in and the uh, silicone pads applied, I'm just gonna go ahead and take my, my motherboard and uh, get the speaker to sit down in there. And the speaker has a key right there and it has to match up with the key there. So it'll fit right nice. And then just set that in. Uh, if, if one of these screws starts threading in wonky at an angle because, like I said, this plastic's never had screws in it before, so there's no, no t um, the red's already tapped, so if it starts going in sideways, don't force it in. Just back it back out till it's straight, and then try it again. And I'm not having any problems with the tightness of these screws. They're, they're going in, they're catching the threads, and they're going in just fine. So it might be limited to just that audio uh, output board. And I'm just going to go ahead and... Um, Tighten these down the rest of the way, kind of work your way around because when you tighten one down, it'll push the board down enough that you can tighten in another one and you kind of have to go around a couple times before you get them all down. And again, don't over tighten. You're not trying to break these off, but you just want the board to, to lay flat and be at the right position. If you do get the screws in too loose, you'll notice um, possibly the, the buttons uh, will be in be too low it'll feel kind of mushy or or won't be there won't press so if you uh, if you notice that you might not have gotten the screws all the way down but yeah just don't over tighten okay so all the screws are in and these buttons are they're kind of low so maybe I don't have something lined up quite right mm, it doesn't feel very good it looks like I got some more more to go over here. Hmm. No es bueno. Let's see. Maybe. Well, suffice it to say that these buttons are up much higher. There's uh, an original Game Boy button. Those are up much higher than these ones. And I've either done something wrong or these buttons aren't very good. They're almost they're not quite flush. Um, I don't know what I might have done wrong. These things happen. The D-pad feels. I think it feels okay. Yeah, it feels pretty good. But these are terrible. What's going on with that? All right. Well, it always happens. Take them back out and try to figure out what's what's going wrong. All right. So the problem either has to be the silicone or it's the buttons. So let's take out these new buttons. Actually, let me put one new button and one old button in. All right, when I push them in from the back with my fingers, they appear to be the same the same height. So so maybe it's the silicone, it's the old and new one. Well, it's hard to say. The old one doesn't look any look any taller. So I'm going to put the old silicone back in after I clean it up and and see if if it's the silicone. If it's not, then it's the buttons. <clears throat> and if it's not the buttons, then it's something to do with the the way the case is sitting, the way the motherboard is sitting in the case. It, it's not screwed as tight as I think, or or something weird. But these button systems are 
very sensitive to very you know really small chain differences and tolerances can make these buttons all kinds of different so I think I've got an idea what's not working here but um, let's see again the buttons are are way too low they're almost flush there and that is not good I think I know what's the problem so uh, unfortunately it isn't good and just and just a note um, when you hold the uh, Game Boy right side up the buttons are are too far sunken in when you tip it over they actually do fall you can't see it on camera but they actually do fall out forward so it's not that they can't come out far enough it's just they aren't when you tip it back over they uh, they slide back in so so there's part of the problem okay so what I've done is I've put the board back in the old uh, front Game Boy case I use the new buttons the old silicone button pads and um, and then all the other parts are the new parts and I've got it so I'm just holding this in with my fingers kind of pressing as hard as I can to make simulate the screw so I don't have to keep uh, putting them in and out and it's actually a little bit better I think but it's still not still not quite at the right height so now what I'm thinking is it might be a little bit of a combination of the shell like the shell seems like it's coming out a bit higher and also might just be the button so I'm gonna to try to use the old buttons and see how that goes okay so now I've got something that, on the order of proof that at least part of the problem is that these buttons are are not correctly made this is the old button that is a new button I'm using the old silicone underneath and I'm holding the whole thing up uh, with my hands there and it might not show up on camera too well but the the B button is significantly higher than the A button. So what I'm thinking is one is these buttons are not molded uh, correctly. They're allowing the buttons to to drop too far in so that something about the middle part is the, is the wrong dimension inside the back of the button. And then also the thing I originally thought was the majority of the problem, I still think it's part of the problem even though it's at least partially these buttons, is that something in this case, this front case, is too high so maybe like the uh, the plastic that goes around the speaker is too high and it's keeping the motherboard from uh, dropping down low enough to push the buttons forward. And that's, that could definitely be it. So I might be able to uh, shave, maybe try to figure out where uh, what, what part is actually too high and then uh, use a Dremel to shave it down a little bit so I can get the motherboard to, to sit flatter uh, closer to the buttons. So here's side by side the, um, the new shell and the old shell. And so a couple of things it could be, I mean, it could be almost anything, but, um, you know, like I said before, this plastic here uh, could be too high. And also it could just be these posts, um, either that one or the ones, some of these posts that are, go around that button. They might just be, you know, less than a millimeter or two high, and that's enough to, to push everything out of alignment. So it would be pretty tough to figure that out. It might just be a trial and error thing, and it's not going to be... Well, it's definitely not going to be as, as uh, clean and nice to put together as I was hoping it'd be. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out where exactly the problem is. This is the uh, old shell, and it's probably very hard to tell on the camera, but uh, when the, the board is in here like this, the speaker and the board are nearly flush. And if, I, if I'm able to push down on the board edge just a little bit, it gets really hard to move that speaker around. This is loose, and then if I... If I kind of press over here, I can feel the resistance. The board's actually contacting that speaker. So there you go. Can't quite move it there. So so the tolerances there are pretty good. The board and the speaker are almost flush. So, so I'll swap it over to the new case. And it's just not flush. Like, it doesn't sit flush to begin with. I can see there's a gap there's a gap right here I can actually see under um, even if you can't and when I push down it actually flexes the board there and I can push down and, and this is still moving around so there's something there's something over here that is too high that's keeping that from sitting as low as it's supposed to bummer okay so I think I found at least part of the problem and it's it's a pretty I don't want to call it a big problem, but it, it definitely is something you can see. Um, this is the the old case, and these one, two, three, right around here, <clears throat> is where the um, AB button silicones go behind. And there's no way for me to show you on camera, but if you look down through this hole sideways there, 
the post that's under there and that hole in the board, they're not really near each other. So there's there's enough space for the edge of the silicone to fill up. You know, there's there's about almost that much space between them. Uh, when I move it over, when I move it over to the new one, and I look down through there, through the hole, at kind of like a 45 degree angle, there's almost no space. And there's no, there's no way that that the edge of the silicone is going to fit without you know compressing almost maximally and that's probably what the problem is is that they made these two two or three maybe uh screw posts too high this one this one and, and maybe this one should be um a whole lot shorter at least at least the uh part of the width that the uh, the silicone uh takes up so I think it's time for Mr. Dremel. All right, well, I, I think that's an improvement. The um, the new button is still um, a little bit lower than the the old button. I probably could s um, put something in the middle of that button to make it stick up a little higher. The um, who knows exactly what all the problems are in there. I kind of you know try to just focus on the area around here. There could be some other places that need to come down. Too, but um, just shortening those posts seems to have um, brought these buttons up a fair amount. And I'm, I'm guessing there's some individual variation between Game Boy anyway, but um, here's a, an original one. I don't know if there's any way for me to show you the height, but um, this one's still probably higher, but I, I, know, I don't want to go in there grinding up too much stuff. Eventually I'll, I'll find something that makes it break. So... Um, this is a decent amount up and um, so it definitely seems like a few of those posts they they mold it just a little too high and it's not much it doesn't it, it ends up looking like a ton but um, you know just shaving shaving them off so the other thing is that because um, you know this is probably made fairly inexpensively in China and they don't cost too much um, you know if you buy one of these, it may work perfect because the the tolerances and the variances between them, uh, some of these um, you know inexpensive plastic factories in China, you know they have wide tolerances and stuff like this is is pretty exacting. So you you might buy one of these and it works great out of the box, um, or you might get one of these and it's got the same problem mine does. So I'm sh I'm sure they're all you know just slightly different from one another. Uh, luckily, I think that actually seems pretty good now. And, um, yeah, so I'm not sure what I'll do with this button. I don't like these uh, old buttons, they're, they're too scratched up, but um, maybe I'll do something to the, the new buttons to make them pop up a little higher. Okay, so at a certain point, you just have to say good enough, and I think, I'm, I think I've reached my point. So I'm going to go ahead and put these screws back in one more time, hopefully. And uh, if I play this thing and I'm just like, man, these buttons are terrible, I'll probably come back and and do something else. But if I play it, I'm like, oh, I forgot these buttons aren't exactly like an original one. Then well, that's good enough. Okay, now that I've got all the uh, the screws in, I've got. Uh, uh, well, there's a problem. Anyway, um, yeah. I made a mistake. Okay, well, sometimes I'm not so smart, but um, it looks like um, these these are fine for the most part. Maybe I cut these a little bit too low. Uh, this one I cut way too low because you can see um, you can see the little dot, white dot there where the the screws are to poke to poke and stress the plastic out there. So. 
Um, my, my sort of over aggressive um, sanding these ones down, probably what need to happen is these come down a little bit and so do some more of them. But since I didn't want to try to sand all of them, I, I shortened these ones too much instead of, you know, shortening quite a few of them. At any rate, uh, so this has not turned out too great. Uh, I've now got this little pinhole. So uh, I don't know what to say about about the shell then because you're kind of put in a position where either it's going to not work or you have to sort of uh, attempt a, a jerry-rig uh, solution that you might end up screwing up like that. So anyway, um, it's not the end of the world. Uh, you can you can start to see um, right here too on that one. That one started to come through. So apparently it's pretty close though and I guess I could have gotten some different screws that were shorter that still would have uh, screwed this tight and um, not had to worry about it going through either. But um, at any rate, the uh, the buttons at least are are in pretty good um, position. These are the new buttons, and I actually went ahead and used the new uh, silicone. I didn't think that actually made too much of a difference, so I went ahead and used the new one. So, yep, bummer on that. Okay, so now we've got our um, the back side and the front side done. We just have to go ahead and uh, reconnect them. So okay, there we go. All right, so moment of truth. Let's see if this all fits together like a Game Boy. Pretty good. Not bad at all. All right. How about that? All right, so here we go. I think I've got that all tight, and um, there's the top, and I don't see I don't see any real um, real gap there. The power switch is um, is working. It's it's maybe a little bit stiff. Uh, maybe I'll loosen up that side a little bit, but it's it's not bad. And uh, here's this side, the contrast knob side. I don't see any real problems over there. Contrast knob turns, and uh, here's the bottom. It's got just an imperceptible gap in between here, and um, I'm not even sure the real. Yeah, the, on the actual uh, original Game Boy shell, that uh, I don't seem to see a gap like that. I also might I might be able to tighten the screw just a little bit more. Let's see. I uh, know it's pretty tight. So, just a little fit and finish detail, but I I wouldn't I wouldn't really worry about that at all. It's not it's hard to see it even. So, and then this side is the uh, the volume side, and uh, it looks pretty good. All right, so we've got our our before and after, and if I just showed you a picture of this. Uh, I don't think you could tell that it was uh, original, and holding it in my hand, I don't think I could tell you that it's not original. So they did a good job uh, in general. There's some some little issues with it, of course. You gotta kind of take what we can get at this point in time. Yeah, the the controls feel a bit different, and uh, that's all individual preference anyway. But these are slightly just slightly looser. The buttons are just slightly out of uh, out of tolerance there. They're sm slightly smaller than the hole, more so than this one. So, all right. And then uh, one thing you'll notice is missing is the um, is the lens, or the protective the screen protector, and they don't include one with this. So you have to uh, provide your own. And the ones that you can buy, I'm guessing they're all made in the same place by the same factory, and they all are pretty terrible. But what can we do? They're all real soft and they scratch easily, so uh, I don't know what we can do about it. Um, wish somebody could figure out how to make the uh, the plastic better, but let me go find a uh, screen cover and we can see what it looks like all the way done. Okay, so I don't know where I got these from. Um, one of the places that you can buy them. Like I said, I think they're all, I think they're all pretty much the same. So, and um, this is the back of these. They have got this uh, die cut um, sticker, and you've got to very carefully 
is you can scratch it with your fingernail. Uh, peel, peel that part off. This is actually a protective uh, coating, so you've got to very carefully uh, peel that part off too. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's a smarter way to do it. So on these ones, I just realized that you can just kind of pull them off like that. That's great. Keep me from scratching it up. All right, so now we can see through there's another protective coating on this side. We'll just leave that on. Right, and then finally, you just peel off the, uh, the backing for the adhesive like that. All right, and line her up in there. And we can see how this shell fits with these aftermarket uh, lenses. And give it a good, uh, give it a good push, and kind of give it a rock back and forth. Get all the adhesive, and if the screen isn't quite exactly where you want it, you can usually slide it into place. There's a little bit of wiggle in there, and I'd say that's a pretty good fit. I'm guessing this is an original. I guess that's an original screen. It looks original. It's a little bit higher than the uh, plastic. And uh, it uh, it fits a little more exact on this one. There's a, a bit of a noticeable gap right here, so there's some extra space this away. This one is uh, is pretty flush, but no big deal. The, this lines up top to bottom though, pretty good. No gap there. So there you have it. And. Um, I guess let's um, fire it up. Let's see what happens. Test out our battery springs, see how they work. So far, so good. Okay, and this is our. Yep, definitely. Did I lose my volume somehow? Maybe I, I got, got the wrong one out. Hmm. I seem to have lost my music. I don't know if this is a... Uh, this one didn't have sound before I started or, or not. I might have to take it back apart and see if I didn't uh, squish the speaker. But uh, anyway, um, you can see maybe got Tetris going and uh, the screen looks... Pretty nice. It still has the protective cover on. I'll just leave it there for now. But um, all in all, I'd say that's a uh, mixed success. The shell was not as easy to put on as I hoped it would be. Um, it is about as good a quality as I... Oh, there we go. Huh. How about that? At any rate, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you were interested in buying uh, one of these shells from Lee Chan off eBay or one of the other vendors that probably has it by now, um, you can make your own decision based on this video and uh, if you found this helpful uh, please hit the like button and uh, share and all those things comment uh, to your heart's content all right thanks